Oh, you see the no scope? <laughs> the no scopes have improved. Apparently, 343 completely busted a crucial gameplay mechanic within Halo Infinite with this recent update. This update that went live on February 15th brought some crucial changes to Halo. We've covered all of these previously on the channel when they were announced back last week. But in case you didn't know, the drop shot, aka swap into your weapon, is now a same time as switching your weapon, so there's no advantage there at all, just to drop your weapon. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a small US-based company that provides a far more tasty, fulfilling, and more importantly, healthier option than your typical ramen brands. In less than three minutes, one packet of Vite Ramen gives you more food than the leading ramen brands, 25% of your daily micronutrients, up to 30 grams of protein, 7 grams of dietary fiber, and most importantly to me, 50% less sodium to help you live a healthier lifestyle. Where the leading brand is really just salt and carbs. Vite Ramen also has vegan plant-based versions as well. My favorite is the Sichuan Chili, as it actually packs a punch of heat along with a filling bowl of ramen. I mean, look at me, isn't that the face of satisfaction right there and why give your money to the corporate overlords we can help out a small business so check out the link in the pinned comment and also in the description of this video to give Vite Ramen a look over and thank you very much Vite Ramen for sponsoring this video the sniper rifle inaccuracy of no scoping has been improved so you should have more accurate no scopes the frag grenade's got a very slight blast radius nerf of 2.7 world units to 2.5 world units you probably won't really notice it unless you're playing like some serious ranked gameplay Talking about ranked gameplay right here, the weapon racks have completely changed within the ranked arena where basically you have red racks now. And what red racks are, are effectively is when you pick up a weapon, the weapon on that rack will remain red as an inactive to be able to be picked up until that weapon that was picked up was either dropped with no ammo or despawns. What this should do is create a little bit more consistent gunfights within rank. So then you have these external sandbox weapons that kind of spice things up rather than being constantly on the map. 343 also talks about lowering the ammo count for the Heat Wave, Stalker Rifle, Bulldog, and Shock Rifle, which are these changes will all be coming within season three. Again, this is all just for rank, so don't freak out about it too much if you don't play rank. The jamming issue for the battle rifle and plasma pistol should now be removed, which can be fantastic. I've come across the plasma pistol issues quite a lot. Now, a lot of maps and mode combinations have been removed from Halo and will come back within season three. And they said the reason why they removed this because of usage of data. There's been a bit of a data leak, if that's one way to put it, when it comes to playing Halo Infinite, where some maps and mode combinations really eat up a player's data, or that some people I've seen on Reddit even hit their data limits because they played too much Halo Infinite. So if you guys want to scroll through right here and just kind of pause the video if you want to see exactly what's not going to be in the game. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be rejoicing about the Team Slayer players removing launch site because, well, it ate up too much data in that variant, which is... I think hopefully people will keep it that way. I doubt it will, but we'll just see what happens. Get some social slayer changes, team double changes, quick play changes as well. Ranked doubles, bot bootcamp changes, as well as team survivors. The custom game browser was apparently fixed where there's an issue where it has like a looping, unable to connect a fire team error message. I actually had this happen when I was trying to do my one thing I've never done in Halo Infinite video. And so it was really frustrating and kind of tough to make it. I'm like, ah. I understand why I haven't played custom game browser, but it looks like there's one crucial bug that 343 created with this update that was very unintentional, but it's been getting some rounds through the competitive community because, well, they have to play this mode as well. There's money on the line for it. And it looks like they kind of broke CTF. One of the pro players collect on the team, Sentinels said that it's a massive delay when trying to juggle the flag or oddball. So let's test this out ourselves. All right, for those unaware what flag juggling is, is where you pick up the flag, throw it forward, and then pick it back up again. It helps you move through the map faster. And so the idea is that you want to have this very smooth transition when it comes to picking it up, because if there isn't, it basically completely ruins that mechanic. Let's pick it up right here. That was pretty average right there. So I'll just kind of sprint with it. Do a little flag juggle like that. Oh, wow, yeah. So picking it up is not a delay, but to throw it, it seems like there's a little bit of a delay. A little bit more than usual. Nothing too crazy from my experience, but you can still kind of flag juggle for the most part. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like that big of an issue, but maybe when it comes to controllers, it might be a thing. Let's test it out there. Let me actually bust out the controller overlay so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here when it comes to that little bit of a delay. So watch when I press the Y button and then when I actually drop the flag. Pressing Y now. You notice there was a little bit of a delay there, right? I'm not the only one seeing this, right? Or like you can see there's a clear difference between when I press Y and when the flag actually releases. It seems like it's just enough to slow you down. And I'm only one point away from getting to Diamond 3. Can we do that within this game? Let's check it out. Man, I do love that Rosenda kit. If you guys don't know about Rosenda, 
I made a short about her in my channel here. You guys want to check it out. The reason why I wanted to jump into ranked here is because most of these changes that we got today are going to be affecting ranked gameplay for the most part. Like you're not really going to notice like a 0.2 world unit difference when it comes to grenades and social. You're not going to be noticing a lot of other smaller details that were ha that were created within this update, especially with the CTF issue. But right now we're going to be playing some ranked Slayer. So play on the classic map Empyrean here, guys, which I'm super happy this map came back. The Pit is one of my all time favorite maps in Halo. There we go. Oh, what? That guy be killed me with his melee? I clearly meleeed him first. So the main thing while playing is I'm going to be looking for is the variety of gameplay within rank play of Halo Infinite. Is it going to be rather consistent with the battle rifle? It's still going to be a little sandboxy focus when it comes. To pick it. Oh, God, there's so many of them on the overshield. I don't like this one bit. Yeah, I didn't turn out in my favor. So I would agree with the pro players that it was a little bit crazy on the sandbox, especially on a map like Argyle. I remember that one. It was the variety on that map was a bit insane because of how much you could really utilize. Now, obviously, there is a part of Halo where it comes to skill of being able to utilize the sandbox in your favor. But when they, I mean, I've seen pros kind of even mention that it's like almost like playing a match of Fiesta when it comes to playing ranked, and you definitely don't want that. You want a little more consistency with your gameplay. When it comes to playing Halo Infinite, especially rank. Oh, you see the no scope? <laughs> the no scopes have improved. I'm also playing on mouse and keyboard, so it might feel a little easier to actually no scope compared to like controller. That's another kill. I think there's a guy up here on the top of this tower. No, I'll help you out there, but I'll get that double. I don't mind getting double kills. Let me triple it up with a triple. <laughs> Let's go. I thought I heard your footsteps. Oh, this is straight up spawn dropping right now. Got the killing spree going. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, he creeped up behind me. Dude, we were streaking a bit right there. I was feeling good. Oh, what is he trying to do? The back jump right there? No, it's not happening there, buddy. <laughs> I know about that jump. Oh, I heard your footsteps right behind me, dude. I sound horrible, like Call of Duty style. You must got to clean up, right? You got this, Devious. Yeah, yeah, go for the win. Yeah, dude. I don't know if you guys saw that. This is like a YouTube guy carried me best day ever. <laughs> Love it. Oh my gosh, we went up nine out of 15. Let's go. We got back up to Diamond 3 after that game. Cool thing was that that snipe I hit earlier actually landed. So the no scopes are definitely improved quite a bit in this game. Other than that, though, pretty much plays the same. Though all these changes that were made with Halo Infinite are very needed. I'm very happy that you got implemented into the game. Hopefully with the season three update, we see a lot more changes. And as we do, I'll let you guys know here on the channel.